Hey, what's going on everybody? Justin here, and in this video, I just want to show you some of my favorite covers from the genre of history from books that I own. Um, I recently did a video on my favorite science book covers, uh, which are probably out of the different genres I read, science, philosophy, history, and fantasy uh, for the most part. Definitely, I think science by far and away has like the best covers because they kind of get to do like lots of really cool illustrations, especially with like um, biology and stuff. So based on the natural world, since that's kind of like the main subgenre of uh, science I read and stuff. But basically what I've been noticing, um, so it's like, like for like good covers, because I plan on doing kind of all the different genres that I, uh, I read, is that history definitely is at the, the low end when it comes to like, you know, aesthetically pleasing like uh, book covers. Um, part of it might be that it will, I think a lot of my like more like, you know, academic, like an older works, you know, aesthetics and like cover design were really a bunch of a, you know, consideration when they were publishing it and stuff. And a lot of the dust jackets are missing. So it's kind of just like solid covers, like just the binding anyways. Uh, but just overall, they're just kind of bland. Uh, some of them are really good and that, you know, they have like a famous painting or a famous like woodcut or uh, like a really good photograph of like an object uh, and all these things based on like whatever the topic of the history book is about. But to me, it's just not quite at the same level as someone actually going out making like sort of an original design or something uh, for that book or that work or whatever. Uh, but yeah, just overall, it was, it was kind of hard actually picking like the, my favorite history ones just because a lot of them were like either not even in consideration or they were good, but only good in the sense that, you know, it was like a famous painting that was like done 200 years ago. And even then I still have basically that's sort of what's like sort of ha happened but yeah let's just uh get right into it uh the first one here is the mighty dead why homer's excuse me why homer matters by adam nicholson read this book last year uh i just really like the color scheme on this one with sort of the beige and like the navy blue and i don't know if you can see it in the light uh but like the author's name in the title and kind of like the border of the ship and everything has like sort of like a like almost like a foil highlight and like purple and stuff which is really cool uh this book um obviously as you can tell stealing sort of about uh the th the two homeric epics and why they're still important and sort of really like where they came from so from a linguistic and like anthropological perspective and stuff uh but anyways obviously the cover we have like a scene from the iliad where odysseus uh you know tells his crew to bind him up to the like ship's uh mast and everything and you know stop his ears with wax or no no they had to stop their ears with wax and but he was allowed to like listen to the siren song and everything but he had to be like tied up and everything so he couldn't you know like <laughs> abandon ship and get uh, uh taken over by the sirens but i just like like the like, it's really simple and that's like two-tone but with like the like the like i said that purple foiling uh just i think makes it like really pop and I, I didn't even notice the foiling, like, obviously when I bought it online, because that was, it didn't really show up. But I did like the cover uh, better than the hardcover version, which was just, like, a photograph from, like, some classical ruin somewhere. So, yeah, that's why I think sometimes making up your own designs um, uh, can be cool. And actually, I'm just going to do a shout out to all the people that do, like, all these designs and stuff. If, if I can find it, probably should have looked it up, you know, beforehand, but of course I didn't. And now I can't find it. <laughs> well, I guess this one is just taken from uh, an ancient archaeological excavated vase, the Stamnos vase, uh, from about 480 BC in Athens. But it doesn't say, like, who kind of adapted it for the cover or anything like that, which is a shame. But yeah, so pretty much everything I just said, uh, pretty much all the covers that I like, except, like, maybe one is essentially just, like, a woodcut or a lithograph or some sort of arc already made and like art piece that's sort of been adapted for, you know, the history book and stuff, but we'll let it slide, I guess. Uh, All right, next up is SPQR by Mary Beard, A History of Ancient Rome, and I'm going with this one mostly because of the triumphal wreath. Um, just, you know, I'm not exactly sure why I like it, but I used to use like kind of a triumphal wreath as like my logo and everything for like triumphal wreaths and stuff, so that's definitely why I kind of went with this one. I kind of like this one as well because it's got, it's got like this simple like sepia marble background with just kind of a gold foil, um, you know, laurel wreath on top, which is just really cool. Uh, I think the bar this book is kind of a little bit overrated, to be honest. Uh, the cover definitely like helps out a little bit. I mean, it's really good if you want to just like start getting into Rome, maybe. Maybe a history of Rome, but it's pretty... Just kind of really basic and fundamental, I guess. Nothing really new in, in a way, uh, especially compared to some of her, like her other books. So 
Uh, like I said, a little bit overrated, but still got a really excellent cover right there. All right, next up is a book that's not really a work of history per se, but it is a collection of primary sources, so I'm going to go with it. And it's The Sagas of the Icelanders, uh, with a preface by Jane Smiley. And obviously this is just sort of a collected, um, a collected collection. Yes, a collected collection. It's just a grouping of some of the various Icelandic sagas based on a couple of different categories. So you have a good kind of overview of the different like subgenres of Icelandic sagas and everything. But the one caught on top is just really cool, or on top, on the cover, I think is really cool. Uh, and it's not like super, super inaccurate, which can happen really easily, especially when you mix the Victorians and the Vikings. You end up with, you know, the, the giant dragon ships and stuff with actual like dragon heads and then the, all the horned helmets and whatnot. But this one still looks really cool, even though it doesn't have like all those like crazy embellishments and stuff, I think. Um, and the jacket design was by Robin Rosenthal, and the jacket, or it just says jacket art courtesy of the Granger collection, so apparently this is just some woodcut that someone has in their collection that they allowed to use and stuff, doesn't really say where it's from, um, uh, but like I said, really enjoy that cover as well. Alright, next up, we have Barons of the Sea and the Race to Build the World's Fastest Clipper Ship by Stephen Ujifusa, which was actually, uh... I don't think it's technically an art because I got it like right when it like was published and stuff. But anyways, I was sent this one by the publisher and stuff. But this one is really cool. I really enjoy like the the uh, two lithograph paintings, or I guess they're not really paintings; they're lithographs. The two different lithographs. Um, the way this is sort of like split with the title in the middle, I think it worked out uh, really well. Um, this dealing with like New York Harbor and stuff, and that dealing, I think, with the Flying Cloud, one of the fastest clipper ships from the 1800s. I just think it's just really well done, like kind of aesthetically, the way they sort of designed it and stuff. Uh, I don't know. Sailing ships just have like a really cool like look to them, especially like on book covers and like paintings and stuff, I think. So it's kind of why I went with this one. And let's see if I can find the designer and all that good stuff. Jacket design by Misha Hunt. And okay, the image is the Sovereign of the Seas. And that was a lithograph by Nathaniel Courier. And then on the bottom lithograph, um doo -doo 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 -doo, is the city of new york from 1876 so that's pretty cool i think uh like i said the two the juxtaposition of the two different lithographs by different people uh i just think it's aesthetically pleasing and that's why i went with barons of the sea and that's a really cool title um as well i find all right next up is another two-toned work apparently i just really like two-toned works because i hear paper paging through history by mark kalinsky it's sort of purple and white uh, with sort of that really cool woodcut of an early, early uh, printing press there. But also like SPQR was like two-tone and The Mighty Dead by Homer Matters was two-tone. Um, I like this one just because it is pretty simple with sort of the white background with like kind of the purple highlights. Plus this like sort of, I'm not really sure what that is, like that purple like textile. I'm not sure to be honest like what, what that is, but I think it just makes the cover like really pop for something like kind of simple like paper. Uh, Mark Kalansky also wrote Cod and Salt. I know Salt was actually a pretty big, um, pretty big hit considering it's a book on like kind of the the cultural history of salt and stuff. Uh, but what he does is he takes like sort of mundane, maybe not mundane, isn't probably the right word, but everyday objects, everyday things, um, like for example, like paper that we kind of take for granted and kind of investigates, like kind of does a deep dive into like sort of the history and lore behind like all that stuff which is kind of really interesting just because like you especially for like booktubers and stuff paper is like pretty like you know just ubiquitous and just sort of everywhere but um there is like a really good history uh behind it so yeah i will get to it at some point and the cover is embossed um a little bit uh, i don't know if you can see it like on the spine and stuff kind of the stippling or whatever to make it kind of um three-dimensional which i think is pretty cool but i just like kind of the two-tone with the woodcut um, the purple definitely just makes it pop a little bit. So, yeah, there's paper paging through history. Oh, and right here we got cover design by Nicole Caputo. And the image is an engraving. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo, it just says from the Universal History Archive. So, there's that one. And then some other ones that I kind of, kind of in the running that I didn't actually, like, grab. But I might as well, just because the video didn't end up being, like, too long is this like series on the Peloponnesian War by Donald Kagan. Like it's kind of like the simplicity I was kind of going with when I was talking about how simple some of the old academic sort of monograph type works were. Uh, but however, these ones have like really uh, cool like matching uh, little plates like in the circles and stuff, probably taken from 
uh, like the bottom of vases or something. Um, I just think they're really cool. I'm missing the fourth one, which is uh, the fall of the um, Athenian Empire. Uh, but these are like pretty much the gold standard with Peloponnesian history, though. They're like super, super academic, but you really can't like top uh, uh, Donald Kagan's work on that subject. Um, and like I said, those ones just work really well together, I think. And then for last, uh, definitely I wouldn't say is like sort of, I'm not saying it's like a runner up, but it's kind of its like own thing right here are the source records of the Great War, which is like this giant set of books and each covers a little bit different. Um, what these are primary source collections of like essays and uh, like graphs and data figures and things like that um, from different politicians and businessmen and ambassadors and generals and stuff of people who actually participated or were alive and doing things during the uh, World War One, And they were compiled like just a few years after, I think in like 1920 or 1921. So really close to um, the event at hand. But what's really cool about these covers is not only are they just like really fancy and embossed and everything, is these covers were based on the design of the actual paper used for the writing and signing of the Versailles Treaty, uh, which ended World War One. So I think that's just kind of a really cool sort of touch to you know make the like I said make the covers based on that sort of parchment design which I think is just really cool so there you guys have those are like my favorite ish history covers <laughs> and like I said pretty much all of them are based on either woodcuts or lithographs or famous art or an object or you know the Versailles Treaty or something like that so pretty much hardly any actual original sort of designs um and that's just sort of what I've been finding with my history works uh just tell me what your favorite like design is or cover of uh, a history work <laughs> or something sort of related to history maybe like geography or something uh leave a uh, comment down below so i can go check them out just because yeah i've been really looking for some really good original history covers and just not really doing uh really good uh finding it so yeah thanks for watching the video everyone just remember to comment like subscribe like all that good stuff i did start an instagram pretty recently um i'm, I'm a total scrub at it still but you know just might get better over time and if you want to support the channel at all i do have an etsy shop uh if you want you know really cool like bookmark designs anything like that definitely go check that out if it sounds interesting to you and whatever you're reading whether the cover is atrocious it's, if it's terrible or if it's awesome just remember read victoriously